Hello, listener. I hope you're having a good week. This is a quick content warning to say that we are going to be swearing, despite what we said in the intro to start with. Um, lots of f bombs and lots of c bombs. So you've got a minute or two to scrabble for the uh, pause or the skip button uh, before we really get into it. So yeah, you've been warned. If there's kids in the car, maybe skip this one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast, a podcast in which we swear a lot. And this week, that's what we're talking about, swearing. So, who's going to be the first to swear? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should try and do a whole episode about swearing without swearing. Imagine. Whoa, how meta is that? Mm. No, like, euphemistic swearing that you might as well be swearing though i'm just going to spell out the word instead of saying it just if you're going to say it we just say it like, like what what you're not supposed to say see you next year my dad always said uh, uh like if you just use if you just substitute a swear word for just a, a different word it still counts as swearing like what the fudge is going on yeah here? it still counts <laughs> i i like to say we should foxtrot oscar now like to say that okay well you've got a child and i haven't so that explains that <laughs> shall we get into it <laughs> uh, have we introduced ourselves oh i'm michael forrest and i'm ivanka magic all right let's do it let's do it <laughs> <laughs> Swearing is a really good way to make a point concisely, um, to sort of show a force of, it's a forceful way of speaking sometimes that you just can't really achieve without um, without a good swear word. But you know, I've noticed Donald Trump, when he's tweeting, doesn't say any swear words. Yeah, but he also uses words that aren't words. <laughs> 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 and can't spell poor. Can't spell poor. But yeah, like so 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 the presence of swearing is frequently pounced upon by the right to to disqualify an argument made. So instead of engaging with the argument, they will just say, Oh, but you said a swear and there's no need for foul language because that's apparently a thing people say. Um so like the danger of swearing is obviously that it gives people that don't want to argue with your point are really easy out if they're lame if they're lame mm. i think the point is that there is often a need for foul language um that's really the thing <laughs> it's like i'm swearing there's no need for foul, for foul language. language what could possibly warrant uh, you using a word i disagree that there is no need for foul language. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> that is my starting position. I do realise that I swear, can swear quite a lot. And sometimes I think it also shortcuts things. It's quite useful yeah. shorthand. Concise. It's very concise. It's hmm. economic with words and breath. Concise, and it's flexible. Energy. Yeah. There's a good thing about how many ways fuck can be used as a noun, as a verb, as in various different ways. <laughs> this is one of my favourite work memories is of a graduate turning to the founder boss person when he said something ridiculous and went, oh, fuck off. <laughs> in that way that just says, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> How was that re received? No, <laughs> I can't oh, even God. remember. I think sometimes everyone just goes in like, uh, nobody breathes. <laughs> it's like Christ. if it was a movie, there'd have been like this thing where everybody froze in space, going, no. <laughs> I I told have I told you that my child's invented a swear word. Did I say that oh, on this? Yeah, but children swear words. I are don't pretty... know though. You see, because she obviously has a need to swear, <laughs> but it kind of 
I, and I think she does know the words, but she knows she's not supposed to use them for some reason. She's not supposed to use them. So she just goes, I'm sure. Yeah. Have I put this on the podcast I've before? I've edited it out. I edited it out. Because <laughs> you so might think you it's lame. This, week. this time, I'm gonna be, she got this sort of nearly three and a half year old, pretty little girl going, Shaddock. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think it's got it's got the explosion, it's got the duh, it's got the It's cur- got too many syllables. What do you mean it's got <laughs> She's t- doing it wrong. <laughs> she's doing it wrong. No, she's not. No, I mean sorry. Um as as not your mother. <laughs> I'm like No, whatever. let's try harder. I'll maybe give it's her the cues are coming out of a child. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll give you the feedback. Um, Listen, darling. I've been speaking to Michael. <laughs> Michael says <laughs> We think you can do better. That you should aim higher. I think, you need, swear I think you need to listen to more Chris Morris <laughs> and really, <laughs> I, get, I think you need to watch the thick of it and really learn how swearing is done. I had this, I had this interesting thing with my father where the Croats swear a lot. There's a lot of even sort of like weirdly, especially from Herzegovina, there's this weird sort of affectionate swearing that you do with small children. <laughs> you go, what the fuck are you doing there? Kind of equivalent, <laughs> which is just bizarre in the extreme. That is not the word they use, but any other version wouldn't translate. Mm. And um, and uh, my dad was like, you know, swearing away in English, no problem. I used the Croatian word for wanker in front of him once. Hey, wanker, what did you just say? You know, mm. it seems like... Because he obviously, his brain... Didn't when it when it was English swearing just didn't register swearing. Yeah, yeah. It's so different, it's isn't diff- it? It and then have uh, the, so yeah, I d- the, he never go into your heart. He d- wasn't bothered. <laughs> he never. This is why people shouldn't learn swear words in foreign languages. You, like that's the last word you should ever be saying in a language that isn't like you're not immersed in yeah. because you do not know what you're saying when you say or that. You don't have the full, you know, power. I mean, you just don't understand. It's like you're kind of just waving a knife around and with not knowing what it's doing, it's, like, it's, and it's really irresponsible. The, and the, uh, you know, I, I you know. very randomly, considering we've only just picked this topic, watched a little BBC videos about how Swedish people swear. So they mm-hmm. did, that and it's things like go and cuddle a blue lobster or <laughs> go and put some something old over your head, or like it's quite quite <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> Like some sort of Monty Python swearing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I was just thinking about colourful Croatian swearing. They don't. I mean, they're quite harsh, but it's things like uh, a dog fucked your mother, I fucked your mother, <laughs> your, yeah. and using using the word cunt in Croatian is just not that. It's not that big a deal at all. Not that bad. Americans think that cunt isn't such a bad word in the UK because they've heard that. Like all Americans <laughs> have heard this, because um, they've heard that um, you sometimes it can. I guess up, like up north and go, ah, look at this cunt. Yeah. Ah, come on, it can sort of be used in that weird affectionate way. But I think uh, that kind of made it a way across to America that they think that it's not that bad a swear word now. But what I don't like is like when Americans use it in a very in a much more gendered way than we do. I, I think it's it's just it always seems to be talking about. Like when, using that to describe a woman just seems really horrible. Like get in a way that I don't really mind See, saying I, it to it, a man. I find it a very odd, and this is part what that email had in it. So I was, I was trying to find that email from a friend who who uh, commented on swearing because we bleeped out use of the word cunt in our uh, podcast. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to say it a lot today. It sounds like I don't know. Well, how do you talk about um, it? And on the one hand. <laughs> I sort of so I, the one thing I did this week on Twitter uh, a few times was that there'd be something um, Boris Johnson says, and then I would f- for you know retweet it or tweet it with the comment "What a cock," <laughs> and then the same for Piers Morgan and various mm. other people because I actually there is something about and when there was that whole uh, Ivanka Trump thing where people were calling her a cunt and Sally Fields, the actress, came back with no, 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 no. Cunt is a beautiful, strong thing. Let's not be calling her that type of thing. Because there's this whole women's thing about mm-hmm. reclaiming the concept. And it's like, why should the female genitalia yeah. be the biggest insult you can give to somebody? If you start mm. analysing swearing, there is a couple of kinds. There's like, I stub my yeah. toe and I go, fuck, swearing, which is just like a emotional release. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the thinking yep. of how 
to illustrate your distaste for somebody or your what you think of them or that, that sort of shorthand. And picking the right word or collection of words can be quite hard because I've deliberately tried, tried over the years to use, you know, call people a cock more. <laughs> I mean, don't, but then that, that could just be a yeah, cockerel. Okay. No, you're right. It's not like... A, yeah, no, but also, I mean, you can you can call no. someone a dick, but it's yeah, it's not as powerful as calling them a cunt. Like, and Trump needs to be called a cunt. Like, that's the only uh, that's the only word big in enough on its usage. own to really use for someone like that. Um, I think you make a valid point. Do you want to hear a Michael's traumatic childhood story? I've got a swearing one. <laughs> I, I um, um, give, give it a go. I'll give it. I'm going to put it on because I may it's know just, this one. Well, my re- my relationship to swearing, you probably do actually. My my relationship to swearing was strange when I was young, and and, and like I because I I um yeah like I, I I learned the word shit at school and I couldn't wait to use it because it was great. So I was about like five six or something maybe seven, um. And I, I came home and first, and I, and I had an opportunity to use it. And I grasped that opportunity. I went shit, and and I, I had a, a nanny back then. Um, she was like some nineteen-year-old sort of, I don't know, but she, you know, we were sort of left alone with her a lot, and she just spanked the shit out of me with no explanation. And I just thought, yeah, so I, for a few years, I was like, I guess swearing is the worst thing you can possibly ever do. Um, and then when I'd hear like people at school, as it was sort of like a kind of early, like even not early teens, but certainly like 10, 11, 12, like when I'd hear people talking about, like, I don't know, they'd seen Robocop or something and they were talking about all the swearing. I'm like, what, they've really let someone say a word like that in a film? And I was just like really sort of... Um, I thought it was a lot worse than it is. So that's that's just um, maybe don't abuse violently abuse children for swearing <laughs> when they don't know or any better. Or maybe just don't violently abuse children. Doesn't in the really first place. certainly. I mean, it, it's a beautiful illustration of why telling somebody off for something they don't understand. Yeah, it's very odd. Mm. You know, like I mean, I, oh, in your case, you got beaten. Up. I knew it was swearing. <laughs> you got. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's... that still doesn't... It's like, like you say, that from then on, I thought swearing was one of the worst things you could yeah. do. It's like, well, you know, let's be proportionate in our telling off our children. Yeah. You know, ultimately, my child will grow up to swear. She may grow up to choose not to swear. I don't know. So that's up to her. But I would like her to have a full vocabulary, mm. a full and rich vocabulary. But having a small child walking around swearing... <laughs> doesn't look good. ...isn't really the done thing. <laughs> Doesn't look good. Uh, doesn't look good. <laughs> doesn't reflect well on the no, parents. But it's a subtle, it's a subtle and powerful mode of language that there's a reason that children shouldn't be using it because they're not ready. They're not people yet. No. Like you need to be a full grown person to really be able to appreciate swearing. Yeah. Like you're, when that, you're I mean, young, you're not. You don't know what you, you've got. But you know, she's still at the age where they call each other poo poo head, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. You know, and that's, that's appropriate. Yeah. You smell. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> thanks. I don't like you. You are not my best friend. Oh, the kind of, wow. That hurts. Uh, that is painful. That hurts more uh, than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, these are the kind of, uh, this is the world that she's currently in, where she should stay for now. Mm. There's also there have been a few ads where they've had little girls swearing in that sort mm. of like anti this whole girly pink thing. Mm. I can't remember who, who did it, but they had these little lasses, proper little girls really swearing. Mm. Um, and that I think it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. And it, well, it's, and it's the thing like, do you want to like, yeah, desensitize people to. Swearing. Thing is, like in in a lot of um, the reason we don't like it, the reason when you're sort of a bit more of a middle class type and you sort of frown on swearing is, and then you see the the common classes swearing away. It's partly, I think, that's um, 
like you get desensitized to it and then you you want you know it's kind of an arms race and if you're swearing about everything possible then you just kind of you've lost your weapon now you need a new weapon so you, you've got to kind of exercise a little bit of restraint i don't like that i introduced that thought with um allegedly ostensibly a weapon ironic <laughs> condescension when the indistinguishable from real condescension <laughs> Oh, the condescending left. Um, yeah, but so when we recorded that money episode two, that one mm. particularly, I got really ranty and sweary. And the reality is that that is how I felt at the time. You know, it's like I wasn't <laughs> swearing just for the hell of it. It was a, I was no. having a sweary rant. But I think the problem with that... Um, if you're not if you're not choose being selective about when you're going to swear and what you're going to use swear words for and when you're not using it to its best effect if you're just swearing because you do desensitize and then you'll just become this sweary person mm. but you know it's like that tweet that i read about the football where this my new favorite twitter handle tea spiller mm. or spiller of tea or whatever i'll check it out but he really swears beautifully <laughs> you know it's mm. there is a lot of swearing there's a high words to swear words ratio but um you know says i want to see england mm. win a world cup one day but not now not in the current climate the very fucking last thing this country needs at this moment is an increase in unrestrained nationalistic country i think that's a, a very well expressed opinion <laughs> Yes. The, yeah. uh, uh, Roz, I know, would like it. She likes swear words. <laughs> She's more of a linguist or sort of an English linguist than me and probably knows more about it. Yeah. I like swearing. I will continue mm. to swear. I think lots of things make people uncomfortable. Uh, you know, you're, we've described the fact that me standing up and shaking somebody's hand made them uncomfortable. Well, I just, yeah. you know. Well, so so we're talking about like so. There's that Trump Trump chant, and then and then I you said that what some people are like uncomfortable with it, so maybe they'll change yeah. it. And to those people, I kind of say fuck you because if you're uncomfortable. The stage on which this war, it's this battle is being fought is to protect the a lot more than comfort of people that are l facing a lot of kind of regressive and like discrimination. So I don't think you really have a right to be offended by that. So discuss. Yeah, you know, I what think you that's the, you know, whilst we're, it's quite interesting in some ways. So the sort of, and I, and I flip flop between this, not just on on swearing but words and use of words in general so words mm. are very very powerful um choice of words they, they they do trigger people they do all sorts of things bring back memories blah, blah, yeah. blah, and they have they have the power to really belittle somebody how you express something nuance yeah. blah blah to some extent on on the one hand, I completely understand why let's say, why say controlling language and saying you know we don't call people that we don't do that you know like you in the last you were talking about um, tarting something up, and I didn't even <laughs> register that it was um, sort of you know like had a gender bias in it, whereas that I hadn't you know I didn't register you had, and it's like oh you know there's all these nuances, and on the one hand. I think making people self-conscious about the words they use, I kind of get that that then might make them pause for thought. But on the other hand, perhaps I'd rather know that they were sexist and sort of be, let them say it and then go, there's a better way of saying that that's less offensive. You know, do you want to, you know, this sort of political correctness, controlling language, let's not swear at Donald Trump because it's terribly rude. I mean... I think you're going after the wrong fight if you're worried about somebody yeah. accident. But the, the story my mother tells is in, so it would have been late 50s probably. Sorry, when was my, no, uh, mid 60s. My grandfather and granny in, my grandpa and granny in Birmingham used to host um, young pharmacists from South Africa, black pharmacists who'd come to England to, continue their studies because they couldn't in apartheid and my grandpa supported that sort of he was a pharmacist so he used to give them jobs and it the, the somebody came over for tea bizarrely little side note 
uh, people like Max Poliso came to tea with my grandpa and then he later got done for being violently ANC. <laughs> so my mum used to tease my right. grandpa that he was friends with terrorists. But this aside, uh, they came over for tea and my, my um, the grandpa was giving tea or coffee and he said to one of these people, he goes, uh, do, you want your, do you want coffee? Um, my granny said, black or white? And my grandpa went, with or without milk? And the person responded, why, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's that sort of like making my granny uncomfortable for what is a, you know, I don't, those kind of moments where you think, who's the more woke? <laughs> I don't know. I always call people racist for ordering a black coffee. <laughs> Just because it's funny. <laughs> So, you know, is somebody having a pop because you're, you've got a, an anti-Trump chant that uses the word cunt? The thing is, though, I mean, what that, what's compelling about that? So I'm sort of like looking at the other, the other side. I don't think this is what the people that are getting offended by it are arguing, but I think the argument against it would, to me, be it's, it's fun and remarkable because you hope it might cause some offence to Trump. You want him to be offended and you're like, this is a nice way to offend him um, and make him feel bad. The only problem with that is that's not going to actually lead to any positive no. outcome, is it? It's just going to, like, uh, I mean, it may it may make it harder for him to spin some bullshit narrative about how much he was welcomed and loved in the UK, which is the sort of thing that he will do. Um, obviously, the parts of the UK that aren't terrorist hell yeah. escapes you know as, as one of his other uh you know um no go zones that was it birmingham's a no -go. yeah yeah no go zones that he invented from his own <laughs> mind and the, the yeah maybe having it out and i'm sort of going back and forth and i'm like the fact that that exists and is very i mean yeah it's, it's harder to kind of construct a narrative where you know you, it's, you're not going to be a you're not going to be a korean dictator if there's footage of even a few people calling you a cunt on the internet. No. Um, because you can't suppress it. Sorry, mate. So, but yeah, I mean, I think I think it's, I, I like that it exists, obviously, because I do want him to be offended. But yeah, it's, it's, it's retreating away from any sort of discourse. Yeah, it's, got, but, it's retreating away from civilised debate. Mm. But then... Um, you're not going to get it from him. We, we know this. So, you know, it's kind of a last resort, isn't it? It's yeah, like yeah, the only yeah. thing really open to us. So uh, it's just a shit situation, really. Well, it is, really, because there's no... You know, like... I, did, I have now been spotting people using the you've been triggered <laughs> or triggered or whatever yeah. it is now because uh, it is very hard to rise above it. If someone right wing complains of swearing, accuse them of being triggered. <laughs> well, if that sort of, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how you rise above some of these things. I really don't. I, I really that sort of being civilized, you know, trying to be nice to somebody who or, or have a grown up because that's the other thing, and I'm not sure it's true, is that when you swear too much, people will say that it's childish and mm. it's it's i don't think you know because it's like supp supposedly the grown grown up equivalent of going you're a poo, -poo head but <laughs> but but it isn't well yeah it's case by case really isn't it that's the point like that it's a it's a powerful tool that can be used in a childish way but can be used in a lot of other ways as well so i mean me you know if i'm can't... if i'm being childish i tend to go have you got upset have you <laughs> rather than go thank you Isn't it funny that these like film, like BBFC censors and, and that kind of thing that have to sit there like counting how many times the word fuck is used in a film and, and, and sort of making decisions according, you can have five fucks. Um, it's, it's sort of like, I, yeah, you're ruining it. it. Just Can we just focus on whether it's good rather than like how many fucks they say, how many um, interracial kisses there are in yeah, this film? Yeah, it's... Let's enumerate things. There's, again, it's like a, a thing that's remarkable, noticeable enough that you can start 
quantifying it in a way that you can't with the more subtle ways of you know subtle sort of microaggressions i think also there's a, there's something about causing offense and i in some ways with some of these people i don't really want to offend them i want them to understand that i am angry Mm, you want them to understand. It's done in if it, it's done in a spirit of understanding. But, it's not done in a spirit of. You know, yeah. do you want to, it's not. I mean, I don't think that's quite. This is me retro fitting a thought onto onto behaviour. No, it's like, no, you know, it makes somebody's, sense. The, the reason I come out with swearing at people about something, you know, like is that or is that it genuinely makes me angry, and the most effective way to. The most effective way to demonstrate to somebody quickly and succinctly that you're that you're angry or you're made angry by a situation is to employ the word. Apart from saying "I am angry," which often doesn't result in the you know people don't respond to properly. Are you? Mm -hmm. It's like if you go "fuck this," then, but then at the same time, it's not a. Uh, if you swear in work, like I do swear at work, I cannot swear, but I do swear. And I just think, I suppose one of the reasons to not swear is that people associate swearing with some sort of like assertiveness and anger and something that makes, again, makes mm. them uncomfortable. I think sometimes I swear at work when I didn't need to. Yeah, I, I, um, had, I was conscious on Tuesday that I was talking to somebody and I was using swearing to illustrate... Short, like I was sort of paraphrasing something and using swearing to illustrate a lack of regard. Mm. And then I was like, because mm. I was saying, and then they're like, oh, who gives a fuck? You know, mm. that was that kind of usage. Mm. And I could tell her, you know, like, she's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, okay, I won't do that. That was my um, work experience was discovering how much grown ups swear. <laughs> I went to a law firm. Yeah, I think sometimes when I swear, it's it's kind of like easy more easier to reach like the swear word is ahead of in the queue of the maybe more articulate way of expressing it sometimes yeah. you just sort of reach for something and you come back with thing or bollocks yeah. or you know the kind of sweary colloquialism when you could probably have reached a bit <laughs> further and found something a bit more specific um for that particular situation and that's something but that yeah, I think I think that's true. I, I, heard, I don't know if you heard my little interjection earlier. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's like yes, and then sometimes you do use all the proper words to describe a thing, and then you're like, you you know, then you're not using plain English. Yeah, well that's true. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's like oh, <laughs> somebody swallowed a dictionary. So <laughs> like, well, <laughs> no, I can't win. <laughs> um, so I think there is a bit of that as well, that sometimes the, the alternative to swearing is to go, I am most dissatisfied with this behaviour of the, you know, the performance of the blah, blah, or whatever it might be. And you're like, and that doesn't go down well either. I don't know. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Or it doesn't sit well. It makes me feel, okay, diff, it, different. Sometimes if I do want to go to the effort of not swearing about something, that you could just go, yeah, fuck it, let's not do that. Mm. You end up sounding like you're practicing your English. <laughs> <laughs> In uh, Michael's amazing note-taking skills yeah. session today, I just appear to have written on one row of my checklist the word "cunt." Full stop. <laughs> what did I? What was I getting at there? It's just now looking back at me. I need to kind of scribble it out because I feel like my notebook is calling me a. My work experience that I did when I was like 15 um, was at a law firm and I was pretty blown away with the swearing there. I thought, <laughs> oh, right, uh, everyone swears a lot in the workplace. I see, noted. Um, <laughs> they were, loved it. And then between that and like the case files of some sort of like um, kind of um, abusive, stalkering behaviour, like used being someone being mailed disgusting things over and over again, like looking through that, it was like... Oof, Ooh. this world is a uh, <laughs> disturbing place. <laughs>
one of my favourite ever protest signs. So when we worked in Millbank Tower and those students were protesting against student loans, in our, it made the news because they smashed one of the windows mm-hmm. and we were all escorted off the premises. But at lunchtime, I went down and joined in for an hour <laughs> and uh, along with Roz. And our favourite sign we saw that day was David Cameron is a cunt. <laughs> you know, it, it says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, a little poster... Not great, you know, you don't need to get big and elaborate and make it unreadable. It can be read very quickly. It understands, you know, the point Yeah, it gets the made. point across. In terms of yeah. an argument, it's like David Cameron can go, no, I'm not. <laughs> um, That's true. So you do then need to sort of go, well, you did this, that, this, that, this, 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 this and this. But it's, it takes him a lot longer to try and uh, <laughs> argue yeah, yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, yeah, like the, the trouble with conciseness of, of accusation is that the uh, the rebuttal is can be just as as concise. Well, for making that sign, you're a cunt. Well, yeah. I don't agree. Well, that's I don't true. agree. That's true. That's true. That maybe that's one of the things that's wrong with it. If you're going to invite discourse, I love a good right. protest sign, though. I love. You see some great protest signs every time there's new protests. You're like, I wonder what someone <laughs> clever will have come up with this there's, time. There was one last night. People were um, holding up, which was something sort of like, "Go away, Schittler. <laughs> so, good. Which I thought was got quite good. I think that's my favourite so far. But yes, I suppose really, like you say, if you call somebody a um, cunt, then they could just go no. Or in the same way that if you call them a poo poo head, <laughs> they, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You know, it doesn't really. It takes for the person, one person, to go prove it, mm. then for the argument to be expanded. Yes, it's not a. It's not. It's a statement rather than a discussion it's a conclusion. point. Well, it's a conclusion. <laughs> it's a conclusion, than a... yes, rather than a. <laughs> which is possibly why it's not great in political debate. Hmm. Mm. When I do think about the thick of it, um, Malcolm Tucker is well. He he exerts his dominance through precise swearing, precise aggressive. No holds bars swearing. Um, so I can see how it, it, it could be intimidating to people in the workplace, couldn't it? Yeah, if you're, think, uh, if you're comfortable that's word, swearing. That's the problem in the workplace. It can be, maybe it's those words intimidating and assertive and aggressive because it's very confident. Like I'm very confident. I'm so mm. confident in what I'm saying is that I'm going to use words that some people don't like in order to say it. Yeah. So I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not worried about, I have no qualms about this statement that I'm about yeah. to make. Very it, is conf- sure. it is confident, really, yeah, it to is, say. It is. And I've never, I've never ever thought about it in this much detail. So actually, <laughs> I'm quite enjoying this episode. But, um, but you know, it's that sort of like, if I go, well, this is a load of shit. <laughs> this is bollocks, isn't it? Um, at work, I'm not going, there is no kind of, um, antipode and question mark at the end of the intonation. Yeah. This is a bit rubbish, isn't it? You know, it's, there's none of that. That's like boom. This is what I think. Um, well, this is, and I've seen the difference between me, my ability to argue something, and someone with a lot more power and experience. Really, like, um, really, kind of like condensed into that. Where I'm saying to a person, like, if you want to pull this off, you're going to need to have big balls like big brass fucking balls and um and then so that person not really listening and then being then someone else sort of making essentially the same argument but going like if you're going to want to pull this off you're going to have to be a cunt in order really? to be able to pull this off and um just like and and this was you know I was like yeah you do you need to be a cunt do you th- cons- I don't think you're a cunt so in a way it was like <laughs> <laughs> like I, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. either way, like I'm not sure you're going to be able to do this because you're not enough of a cunt. It's just such a more kind of like yeah. it was you. I saw it used in this very um, confusingly powerful way. Well, isn't it amazing though that because because actually there is a subtle difference between telling somebody they're going to need big square balls or big brass mm-hmm. balls or whatever, which is yeah. kind of a masculine. You need to be strong. Yeah. Say somebody they need to be a cunt says you need to be nasty. Right, yes, well. And 
you know, it just says it's not, it's not nice. No. But it's also like a way of kind of giving them a bit of a get out as well. It's a yeah. way of them being able to go, okay, well, I don't want to be a cunt. Yeah. You know, so it's, in a way it's kinder <laughs> than me saying. Yeah, it is. It is. You're, yeah. But you're, you know, the kind of, uh, um, you know, what, because what it really means to say that somebody is a cunt is that they're entirely self centered like they're uncompromisingly chasing after what they want. Yeah. Which. You know, no matter who they're going to tread on. Yeah. It says that, which is kind of more than just being courageous. Yeah, yeah. It and it's also like... Courageous th- and evil. <laughs> and able to ignore all attacks. You yeah. know, like people are going to come at you with this and that and you're going to have to not care about them. Yeah, um, yeah, If yeah. you want to and achieve this. Yeah, um, uncaring, yeah. self sent You know, it's like got layers and layers and layers. Opposite of, of a vagina. <laughs> really weird also if you said to somebody you know you need, you're going to need to be a vagina <laughs> like so most fucking weird thing ever Whereas very Andy, kind and nurturing you do yeah, you do so. find that there's occasionally you get comedians comedians who are women making observations about the fact that you know we use this you're going to have to have big square balls which are like really sort of squishy delicate things that are easily hard i heard that guilty feminist yeah and it's just like and then you've got you know a vagina which is very the opposite of that (laughs) can can weather quite some serious storms um (laughs) yet one is a symbol of strength and one Mm. is a symbol of like because you know why is pussy weak and cunt strong. Don't know. This makes no we sense. We need a linguist, god damn it. Well, I think we've heard the arguments, haven't we? Linguist. Yeah, but I is that even a real job? <laughs> it is. The, evol- the evolution of language is an interesting thing. Well, yeah, I suppose I was, yeah, and I, I was going to make a point about you know, just how sw- the nature of swearing changes over time, how it's, it's a very much sort of. Um, Trend. It's constant evolution of swearing, mm. isn't it? Like the swearing that upset our parents is not the same swearing that will upset us. No. And do you eventually run out or oh, do well, we keep... A, it seems like all the words that are the most offensive are still the ones that have always been the most Maybe offensive. Maybe soon it's going to be like dunderhead, or like poo-poo head. Maybe. Be <laughs> but I'm that hasn't been the pattern, has it? Is it, is it no. just going to get saturated? Or you, you, I'm, I worry about swearing saturation. <laughs> do you? Yeah, like what are we going to have left if we keep overusing yeah, if we the... if desensitise... Maybe that's the thought to leave. Maybe that's, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's the singularity of, of, of it's not just technological, it's also swearological. What do we do when the swear words run out? Outpace our ability to invent them. The, the saturation of swear words. At, maybe, you know, maybe give it a 10 years and it will be like, you are such a Trump. Hopefully. Because Trump is also, interestingly, you know... <laughs> <laughs> also, something that you know is a uh, is quite Fucking normal for Trump. people to use to say instead of saying "fart." Yeah, Americans. Did you know that Trump? Uh, it's all very well John Oliver doing a show on uh, Donald Trump's real surname being Drumpf. Yeah, but he's British. He should know that Trump also means fart. Yes, <laughs> and it does. And that's but I like I relish the idea, and I think I might try and bring it in now. You fucking Trump. <laughs> yeah, so Trump gets gets evolved from just being somebody, you know, a fart to being what is currently used beyond for a cunt. cunt is yeah. Trump, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. Trumpy little twat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got a, it's got the cadence of a swear word it more has, than it has. fucking your Crump. daughter's one. It's got that sort of explosive. <laughs> And, it's, and it meets your single syllable. Um, oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Criteria. Bollocks to it. <laughs> but um, I also do enjoy some of these really British swearing, like, bugger. <laughs> I don't like bugger. I That's one like that my parents bugger. use. Sounds like I've heard, I remember you say, you've, you're a bugger sayer, and I'm like, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't see your face at the moment. So I'm making sure garage band doesn't spontaneously combust and I don't mm. notice it. I'll make you smaller there. You can go over there now. Yeah, by swearing at me. 
Oh, look at your face. <laughs> smaller by swearing at me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's the episode. Maybe we've done it. Thank you for listening to our podcast this week. You can find out if you like it. You can find out more at grandpodcast.com and you can hit that big orange subscribe button and then you will never miss an episode unless you have turned off. There are many reasons you will still miss an episode. <laughs> you can find me, michaelforestmusic.com And me, at Ivanka on Twitter. Um, you can email us both, hello at grandpodcast.com and you can just find us on iTunes and all the stuff. And uh, just tell your friends, if you would, if you wouldn't mind. Um, anything else people can do? Write us reviews, ratings, stars, stars in all the places. Many stars will help everywhere, however you yes. listen. Tell your friends, tweet, retweet, la, 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 all that stuff. Anyway, uh, and just tell us if you think there's something we should do that's different. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 bye, bye. bye.